<laughs> you made it through the vortex. I'm going to edify Richard Wesley. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> Richard Wesley is a screenwriter. He's a playwright. He's a professor at NYU Tisch School of the Arts, the Department yep. of uh, Dramatic Writing. The Department of Dramatic Writing, yes. He is a friend and a colleague, of course, of the late Lee Chamberlain which is why he's here today. Um, I'm just going to mention some of the things that he's done because your, your biography is pretty much endless. Um, but <laughs> let's see, some of the screenplays that you've written, Native Son. Yes. Uh, the screenplay for Mandela and De Klerk, Murder Without yeah. Motive, mm -hmm. 100 Center Street, Bojangles. Oh, that was a television series. I just wrote a couple of episodes for them. Okay. Blase, blase. <laughs> and then, of course, Uptown Saturday Night and Let's Do It Again, which were both uh, directed by the legend Sidney Poitier. With yes. a that included, of course, Denise, Denise Nicholas, Ozzy Davis, Calvin Lockhart, the notorious Bill Cosby, and... <laughs> Lee Chamberlain. So I want to give a warm welcome to you, Mr. Wesley, and thank you for joining us today in spite of all the obstacles in this uh, kind of walk down memory lane and tribute to Lee. So I'm just going to get, get right into it and ask you mm -hmm. uh, what the atmosphere was like at the time of coming together to do a film like Let's do it again and Uptown Saturday Night, which, you know, in their own way were groundbreaking. It was the uh, early, uh, the early 70s um, uh, when I came uh, onto that project, or when Sydney hired me, it was that was 1973. And um, the uh, black film movement had been pretty much underway for at least uh, four or five years at that point. Uh, Hollywood uh, 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 had started uh, as early as 1967, 1968, uh, releasing uh, uh, black themed films. Um, Could you say uh, those films? The only film that comes to mind to me, but I'm not that I'm not as, uh, you know, I'm not that old, you know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> but the first thing I remember that came up on my radar was In the Heat of the Night. And that was starring uh, Sidney Poitier and... Yes, Carol. Rod Steiger. Is that the film that you're referring to? or is No, it no, it, uh, it's not. Uh, Sidney's, Sidney's films were, um, I think... <sighs> In in terms of black history, uh, black film history in America, Sydney's films occupy a a particular kind of niche that's um, that's a little bit different from um, the kinds of commercial films um, that we might be thinking of. Sydney um, generally uh, his career uh, he's noted for usually being the only black presence in the films that he was in. Or, or, or if there were other black characters, he was the one who was sort of like one of the stars and the other black characters in the films were feature characters who came in and out. Uh, you might only see them in one scene or two. The kind of film I'm talking about is a film like um, Cool Breeze, uh, uh, Thalmas Rasalala's uh, film, um, uh, which was basically a remake of Asphalt Jungle a uh, film noir slash gangster slash uh, action film from the early 1950s. And it was remade um, in the late 1960s with Thalmas Razalala in the, uh, in, in the lead role. Um, or Raymond St. Jock in um, If He Hollers, Let Him Go. Um, and uh, 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 another a film that he made uh, uh, right around that same period of time called uh, Change of Mind, uh, which uh, is pretty much forgotten today, but um, yeah. uh, is a kind of, uh, of, of the three films that I just mentioned, that one is perhaps one of the most provocative 
because it's a film, um, it's kind of a science fiction movie. Uh, St. Jock uh, basically plays um, uh, two characters in one. At the beginning of the film, um, there is an emergency operation being carried on in a hospital. Um, and there are two victims involved. Uh, both um, uh, were killed in accidents just a few hours before uh, the film begins. A white man driving a car um, uh, uh, was killed in an automobile accident in which his body was almost completely destroyed, but his brain was intact. A black man was killed in an accident in which he suffered incredible head trauma, but his body is otherwise in perfect condition. So without, any, without asking any of the family's permission or anything, the surgeons have placed the brain of the white man in the black man's body. And so when he wakes up, Sounds like fun. who is he? Right. You know, and so the first half of the film is about a white man trying to continue to live his life inside that black body. And, no, and all of his friends can't adjust to it. The second part of the film is him going into the black community, trying to be a black man in the black community, and that's not working. And at the end of the film, he has to strike out on his own and forge a completely new identity. Um, and um, that, that particular film, um, I, you know, I, I, it's one that sort of stays with me. I, I still remember it. And that film was out before 1970. And uh -huh. then, of course, once you, once you get into the 70s, you're getting into Melvin's, uh, Melvin Van Peebles with... Um, um, uh, Sweet Sweet Back, and uh, then later on, Lady Sings the Blues, and and um, everything starts really starts uh, you know taking off from there. Uh, uh, Hell Up in Harlem, uh, adaptations of of the novels Cotton Comes to Harlem, uh, and uh, films like that. And it was in that particular kind of milieu that Sydney approached me about writing um, a comedy film in which he was go uh, hoping to bring together all of the top black uh, comedians at the time mm -hmm. and you know, have them star in the film, feature them in the film, uh, in the finished product. So we're talking about Uptown Saturday Night right now. That's yeah, and that's what Uptown Saturday Night was born into. Well, you know, I the so many thoughts. Um, I had the opportunity to actually meet Sydney personally. Mm -hmm. he, he graciously welcomed me into his home in uh, on May 5th of 2016. Okay. I, I wanted to, you know, just get his perspective and memories on, on Lee, on mom. Mm -hmm. And hearing you talk about the top comedians of, of the day, of course, mom was doing the Electric Company, which is basically one big comedy show, you know, teaching kids how to read and write. And, but of course, I mean, the first role that he tapped her for, you know, was more, quote, of a dramatic role. And I remember she used to say that drama was easy, but that it was comedy that was difficult. Well, you know, um, even though it, it was a comedy, you know, uh, and Sydney's original thrust was uh, to get nothing but comedians for the various roles uh, in the film. Um, over time, th that approach ha had to change. When I wrote the script, Sydney only intended to direct the movie. He wasn't going to be in it. Um, the, the two roles, the two, the two lead male roles in the film were designed for Red Fox and Richard Pryor. Oh. Bill Cosby had read the script and he wanted to play Sharp Eye Washington. But Warner Brothers um, felt a little uneasy about, they didn't know who all these comedians were. Richard Pryor was not a big national star at the time. And um, Cosby was primarily known for television and, and did have a, uh, have a following. So they felt 
there was, a, you know, Sydney was getting a lot of uh, feedback from the studio, and the studio basically said, Sydney, the money to do this film is yours if you'll be in it. We'll feel much more comfortable.